Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Wen Hao Diao. Um, I am an associate professor in the Department of East Asian Studies at the University of Arizona. I am also the co-director for the Center for East Asian Studies and also the program director for the Star Talk at University of Arizona in uh, the year in the summer of 2024. Um, today, I have the honor to introduce to you um, the first installment of our Why Learn Chinese series. And in the series, um, we have invited speakers from very diverse backgrounds um, to tell us um, <clears throat> their experiences of how learning Chinese transformed their professional and even life trajectories. And this is a part of our Star Talk Chinese Language Summer Camp project in 2024. Um, we also would like to share this with the larger community of Chinese language learners and teachers. Um, and today, the very first installment of this series, um, we have the honor to have Mr. Leland Lazarus, um, who is the Associate Director of Research at Florida International University's Gordon Institute of Public Policy. Um, and he serves there as an expert on China Latin American relations. He is fluent in Chinese and he leads the diversity and inclusion initiatives as a board member of the Fulbright Association. He has been recognized as, he has got many awards. He has been recognized, for example, as a Sean Brimley Next Generation National Security Leader an American Chinese Society, African American China Leadership Fellow. He has won the Civilian Service Commendation Award from the US Department of Defense. And he has also received distinguished honors from the Department of State. Let's welcome um, Mr. Leland Lazarus. Hi, everybody. I hope everybody's okay. My name is Leland Lazarus, and it is a pleasure to be able to talk to students in the Star Talk program. And I first want to thank uh, Professor Diawen Hall for the great introduction. Um, and I'm going to talk about my Mandarin language journey. I actually looked back and I realized that I've actually been studying Mandarin over 15 years or almost 15 years. And so time goes by really fast. Uh, I'll spend a couple minutes to share my own personal language learning journey and some lessons that I've learned throughout the years, which I hope could be helpful for you all. But I first want to start off by um, saying a question, right? How do you keep up your Mandarin? That was a question that I had asked uh, a man named Robert Daly back in 2016. If you don't know who Robert Daly is, you gotta look him up because he is a former US diplomat. He used to be a TV star in China. He used to be in like China's Sesame Street. Um, and he was also the head of, or he was a actor in a TV show called um, Beijing. He was also an interpreter for Henry Kissinger he was the director of the uh, Johns Hopkins Nanjing program, and then he currently serves as the Wilson Center Kissinger Institute director. But back in 2016, when I was working as a, a U.S. diplomat at the U.S. Embassy in Beijing, um, I had the chance to spend the day with him on his visit uh, from D.C. to the Beijing in order to give several public lectures in the city. And I was absolutely mesmerized by his ability to give speeches and interviews in fluent Mandarin, even though he mostly lived in the US. I really wanted to hear a secret. So he said something along the lines of, well, definitely having a Chinese wife helps, um, but you really have to be crazy about learning Mandarin. You have to be crazy about learning Mandarin. So he pulled out a notebook and opened up its worn, torn pages. And they were filled with scribbled characters, you know, new words, uh, 成语, uh, whole sentences. And he told me, I try to review this thing every single day. I read them out loud. I try to memorize them. And my goal is not just to speak like a Chinese elementary or high school student, but instead my goal is to sound like an educated college 
or master's student. And so years later, I have found two Chinese idioms that really boil down what Robert was telling me that day, which is xue wu zhi jing. That's learning has no end or learning has no frontier. And xue wu chang shi, learning has no constant teacher. These words have really guided me throughout my own uh, 15 year language journey. Now that journey, like many others, began in college. You know, I uh, loved watching Chinese films like Bruce Lee and um, Jackie Chan, Rush Hour, and so on and so forth when I was little, but I never had a chance to actually learn Mandarin until uh, I got to college. And my international relations professor at Brown University, he predicted that China would become the US's greatest competitor. Uh, this of course was back in 2008, um, when Beijing had just hosted the Summer Olympics and the world was just about to enter the economic financial crisis, right? And he said, um, you might as well start now in order to learn about China, who's going to be our major competitor sooner rather than later. And so I took his suggestion to heart. I started studying Chinese language and history and culture. Um, but anyone who took or is taking a college Mandarin class knows quite well uh, how much of a grind it is to learn characters, you know, take daily, uh, uh, you know, 小考试, right, or uh, 小报告, um, and still come away speaking, you know, just little baby in basic Chinese. And so even though I had gotten to what they said was advanced Mandarin uh, by the time I finished college, I could barely hold a sustained conversation uh, with an actual native speaker you know, when I went to a Chinatown or whatnot. Um, my first trip to China was actually with my college a cappella group when we went to Hong Kong, uh, which meant that my Mandarin was essentially useless uh, in the largely Cantonese speaking city. Uh, and so I sorely regret not really having studied abroad in China during my college years. And that really leads me to my uh, first lesson which is study abroad in mainland China or Taiwan as early as you possibly can, right? Uh, you've got to get that direct exposure to the culture and the language as soon as you can. So for me, it wasn't until I began working at China Central Television or CCTV after college that I really felt like my Mandarin improved. Um, CCTV offered Chinese classes for its foreign employees if, of course, you can fit it in um, you know, between your day job. And so since I was uh, first an intern and then uh, a lowly associate producer, I did have the extra time to take all the classes I could. And the best thing about those classes was that they uh, had to do with current affairs, right? And so uh, I really got to learn vocabulary that I could use with my Chinese coworkers right out of the, of the classroom setting. Now, lesson number two is take advantage of any workplace language learning opportunities, right? Um, and you, you never know, maybe your, uh, your employer might offer uh, stipends or uh, some sort of funding for continuing education, and you can use that funding to uh, support your continued language learning outside of the classroom. So after CCTV, I uh, took a little detour in my Chinese journey, and I went on a Fulbright scholarship to Panama. Um, I am Panamanian American, both my parents are from Panama, and so I wanted to get in touch with the country of my heritage and learn Spanish. But I was really scared that I'd lose my Mandarin while focusing on improving my Spanish. So one of the first things I did uh, when I got to Panama was to search out um, in-country Chinese teachers and the Chinese community. Lo and behold, I discovered a Centro Cultural Chino Panameño, right? A, a China Panamanian cultural center, which was funded by Taiwan at that time. And there I met a Taiwanese teacher who agreed to teach me uh, multiple times a week, which then gave me the consistency and the structure and the motivation to keep um, keep up my language learning. 
And I supplemented my my um, those Chinese classes with a business Chinese textbook that I went through on my own. And I also frequently hung out and made friends in Panama's Chinatown called El Dorado, uh, where I chat with Chinese sh uh, shopkeepers and business people, um, which leads me to lesson number three. No matter where you live, right? Um, whether it's in a Chinese speaking country or a non-Chinese speaking country, you can always, always find a Chinese tutor and a Chinatown, right? The Chinese diaspora is literally everywhere around the world. You got to seek them out and you got to make a concerted effort to immerse yourself in Chinese culture, even if it isn't the dominant culture where you live. So after that, I continued my Mandarin classroom study uh, while at Tufts University. I went to the Fletcher School of Law and Diplomacy for my master's degree. Um, all this study paid off because when I officially joined uh, the U.S. State Department as a Foreign Service Officer, um, I served on um, the China desk in D.C. I served at the U.S. Embassy in Beijing, and I served at the U.S. Consulate in Shenyang, right? And I think uh, my my previous Mandarin language and, and skills and um, exposure to Chinese culture um, was directly impactful to my ability to uh, to serve in the State Department. So uh, during my tours as a U.S. diplomat, I used my Mandarin on a daily basis. I uh, did visa interviews in Mandarin. I engaged with local um, government officials. And I gave speeches at universities all throughout uh, Northeast China, all in Mandarin. But I think the absolute key for me was meeting and hanging out with locals. Um, there is a Chinese saying called um, Ru Shang Sui Su, right? Uh, which, which really means uh, the, the, um, do as the Romans do, right? Uh, completely immerse yourself in the community. And so everyone became my teacher uh, while I was living in China, right? For example, the woman making balls, right, uh, and jiaozi, uh, right near my apartment, uh, always talking about her children's study habits, right? Or my bald barber, who was also a practicing Buddhist, and he was the only one who was brave enough to cut a black man's hair um, in in the city of Shenyang, where I was. And I was probably the only black person he had ever seen before. Um, and he would quote Buddhist texts and poets from ancient dynasties. Um, also, my jujitsu instructor, Wang Wei, um, who, you know, swear to me, right? He taught me about uh, Manchu history. And, um, you know, he would swear that he was the direct descendant of Nur Hatshur, uh, who was the, the first um, leader of the um, Qing dynasty. Um, and he would tell me all this while, while putting me in an armbar submission. Um, or the countless taxi drivers who vigorously debated with me in their cigarette smoke-filled cars about which country was better. You know, 美国还是中国, right? Um, each encounter with a local was a chance to fail, to fumble and stutter, to correct myself, and to try again and again. Um, I also had access to a Chinese teacher uh, in my job, right, three times a week, as well as a distance language instructor once a week. So it was during this time that I think I really, really reached fluency. Which leads me to lesson number four. Take every single opportunity you can to practice with a native speaker. Don't be shy, uh, push through the awkwardness and really just speak up, right? Uh, whether you're in a Chinese restaurant or uh, you're hanging out with a Chinese uh, fellow student, just push through. Even if they're going to talk to you in English, insist that you uh, talk to them in Chinese. Now, lastly, um, I haven't been back to China since 2019. And I'll, I'll actually be very happy um, because I'll be going back to mainland China next month, uh, at the very end of June. But I have been back to Taiwan um, uh, two times before uh, over the past several months. But regardless, you know, China and the Mandarin language still play a huge part in my life. For example, when I worked at the U.S. Embassy in Barbados, right, the government sent me to Barbados 
after my time in China, I immediately found uh, the local Chinese population and I made friends. I continued to um, speak Mandarin there. Now I'm speaking to you from Miami where I live uh, and I'm a, um, a researcher and professor of practice at Florida International University. I'm teaching Chinese foreign policy and I'm focusing on China, Latin America relations. Um, but uh, even though I live in Miami, I have given multiple interviews in Mandarin to uh, Voice of America's Mandarin language um, uh, service. Uh, just look it up. It's a, it's a great TV program called Shi Shi Da Da Tan. Um, to really keep abreast of current events in China. Um, and I also listen to podcasts called uh, Gu Shi FM, uh, which is a, a great podcast to talk about sort of everyday issues that young people in China are facing. I use that to really broaden my vocabulary beyond politics and economics and sort of things that I'm, I'm mostly comfortable with, right? And as I listen to the episodes, I try to mimic the guests' accents, I stop and I repeat sentences uh, that I didn't understand. I make sure to jot down new words in Chengyu, right? Um, and for over you know several years now, um, a colleague and I run, um, or we're running a biweekly Mandarin language group for young China hands of color in order to have an additional space for everybody to practice speaking Mandarin, even if they live outside of China. Um, I also still have a weekly Chinese Mandarin tutor uh, in order to keep honing my Mandarin. And um, we go over everything from Confucius's, you know, Lun Yu, Analects, right? Or Si Da Ming Zhu, right? The, the, the four main classics, you know, Journey to the West and um, uh, Dream of Red Chamber and Water Margin. Um, and the, the best, my favorite, which is uh, Three Kingdoms, Romance of the Three Kingdoms. Um, and all the while, I make sure to jot down new words in my own worn, torn vocabulary book, just like Robert Daly told me in 2016. Now, do I still make mistakes? Absolutely. Uh, will I ever get to sound like a completely you know, native speaker? like Robert Daly, or uh, if you know this Canadian superstar, Da Shan, maybe not. Um, but I, I have faith that as long as I learn a new word every day, as long as I'm conversing with locals, as long as I am helping others to improve their Mandarin, um, I, I think that, that I'll be following Robert's advice, right? You have to be crazy about learning Mandarin. And more importantly, I think that I'll be following those two ancient uh, sayings that I said in the beginning, uh, and thank you so much uh, for listening. And I'm so happy uh, that you're also following in that uh, language learning journey of Mandarin. Thank you.